Welcome back for another edition of NC Sports Weekly News. Offshore racing is taking the scene on multiple courses. Donna Bertarelli, Jan Richard, and the Maxi Trimaran Spin Drifted 2 team shatter the speed sailing record on the Discovery Route. Drama in the Indian Ocean as the fleet of the Clipper Round the World Race takes a violent beating off the coast of South Africa. The Transat Jacques Vabre is in full swing on the water and online. The progress and the damage report with senior correspondent Sébastien Destremont. Mission Base 852 in Balaklava, Ukraine for one of the toughest triathlon challenges in the world. The Spanish Armada takes China as kite surfing superstars Alex Pastor and Gisela Pulido grab the 2013 PKRA Freestyle World Titles. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Donna Bertarelli, co-skipper Jan Guichard, and the entire Spindrifter 2 team had plenty to rejoice after crossing the finish line and setting a new world speed sailing record on the Discovery Route. At 40 meters in length overall, Spindrifter 2 is the largest maxi trimaran ever built. And after a summer test run at the Fastnet, this beast has successfully rode the hump of the trade winds westward across the Atlantic Ocean for the 3,885 nautical miles from Cadiz in Spain to the small island of San Salvador in the Bahamas. Shattering by 20 hours the mark set by compatriots Francama and crew on their Grupama 3 in 2007, the new Spindrift racing team truly raised the bar, stopping the clock at 6 days, 14 hours and 29 minutes. This is a big achievement for Donna Bertarelli as a woman, as a top sailor in her own right, and now forever stepping outside the shadow of Brother Ernesto and the past Alenghi family adventures in the limelight of the America's Cup. Since uh, February, he has worked a lot in order to, uh, to bring the boat and, uh, to, to successful conclusion and uh, to choose the team and, uh, and to prepare the boat well. And uh, I'm, I'm absolutely so excited and, uh, and happy to, to have done it. There were a lot of uncertainties whether I would be able to, uh, to helm the boat, to, to be happy at sea and feel comfortable. And uh, all those doubts have been lifted. And, uh, and now I know that I can have a future with this boat and, uh, and uh, go and uh, catch some other records. This uh, spin drift at two feet has also marked a leaping Yang Guichard's uh, pro sailor career. From the helm of the French energy team on the AC-45s at the World Series to the Route de Prince on the Mod 70 spin drift 1, including the spectacular capsize last July, this has been a pretty busy season for Yang. It's not just about excellent boat handling or tactics. Success on these record attempts is first built on land through good management developing a winning design, constructing the boat, and selecting the right team. I'm so happy, I'm so proud uh, in the team. Uh, the teamwork on board was really great uh, because we did a lot of maneuver. Uh, we take some reef, we release the reef, change the headset uh, so many times, and uh, the team was really happy all the time to, to do the job. So I'm so happy in the, in the team, and I'm really so happy in uh, Dona because it was uh, for us, he was crossing Atlantic, and he, he did as well a really a big job, uh, like everybody. So, um, and it's a good day for me, it's a good day for Spin Drift Crossing. Hop on board the awesome Maxi Trimaran Spin Drift 2 for the complete take on this spectacular new world sailing record. Plus speed, 
the power, the teamwork. We live the experience across the Atlantic Ocean in the upcoming edition of NC Sports Top Story, only on Nautical Channel. The 12 teams competing in the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race are now in their third week in the Indian Ocean following their start of Lake 4 from Cape Town's Table Bay and are now facing the 4,700 mile ride to Albany, Western Australia. While perfect conditions initially eased the boats from the southern tip of Africa on 15 knot winds, soon a violent storm crossed their path on the fourth day at sea as 40 knot gales battered the fleet and tested the nerves of these mostly non-professional sailors. With massive waves roughing it up, minor injuries were reportedly abundant, but things had started to get serious when Australian David Griffin punctured his calf as the bow of mission performance was engulfed by a wave, forcing a stopover in Port Elizabeth for treatment of their crew member. Growing more powerful than expected, the storm also shook up the crew of Derry London Derry Dwar. Turning 36 on the date, Michelle Porter was slammed on her side, injuring her upper left arm. With crew members suspecting a fracture, an SOS was immediately launched, and in a full-fledged rescue medivac in mid-ocean, the South African Coast Guard made contact, boarded the yacht, stabilized the patient, and finally airlifted the British sailor to the Port Elizabeth Hospital, some 250 nautical miles away. Fortunately, Michelle got the thumbs up from the medics and only suffered a few painful torn ligaments, but no fractures were diagnosed. This is one birthday she will never forget. Here is her dramatic recap. We were hit by a very big wave. Um, we've had quite a lot of waves hit us over the last few days, but this one was pretty monumental. Um, I was tagged onto the high side with my safety line um, and just didn't see the wave coming, heard it coming. Um, and the next thing I knew was I was clinging onto the rails on the low side, so had it not been for my safety line, I would have been straight overboard. Yacht uh, Chindao is proving to be the big surprise in this fourth leg of the Clipper Round the World race. As this edition comes to a close, the Chinese flag bearer is holding a slim 135 nautical mile lead on Henry Lloyd, and nearly 200 on 1DLL and Great Britain. It's a longer stretch to Albany in West Australia, and reshuffles are to be expected. More updates on the next NC Sports Weekly News. Following a five-day delay due to prohibitive weather conditions, the Transat Jacques Vavre was finally off last week from the French port of Le Havre, and most of the fleet is now on its 5,400 nautical mile journey to Itajaí in southern Brazil. The larger Mod 70s, Multi 50s, and the 60-foot Imoca monohulls took on the crossing of Cap Finisterre and the Bay of Biscay, but the smaller Class 40s were soon grounded in Roscoff for safety concerns and awaited for a restart earlier in the week. Here's the full report on the water and online with virtual regatta by NC Sports' senior correspondent Sébastien Destremont. Welcome to the office, NC Sports fan. The Transat Jacques Vab has finally left Le Havre less last week. And we've already witnessed some serious carnage amongst the fleet this weekend. On Saturday, Maître Jacques loses a part of her starboard hull when she is hit by a rock wave during the storm in the Gulf of Biscay. The crew is safe and they arrived on Sunday morning in La Coronia, Spain. We were hit by two big waves, but they weren't any stronger than the ones we got last night, or even in the last two years with this boat. To be honest, looking at it from the exterior now, it really breaks my heart. In the Imoca class, dominating the fleet from the early hours of the race, François Gabard and Michel Desoyons both massive suffered a major blow. On Sunday afternoon, the duo is forced to an express pit stop in Portugal to replace a damaged radar. 
Then on Sunday night at around 2300 hours, race control was advised of Arkema's Regent Aquitaine's Cup size. The team is safe and unharmed. The two skippers are inside the Upton Hall and are thinking about how to organize the rescue. For now, the sailors have no intention of leaving the boat as the weather conditions allow them to consider a tow. The capsized boat is located 210 miles west of Cascais, Portugal. Meanwhile, all is going well for the MOD 70 Oman Air. Damien Foxall sends us this report and shares the team's current strategy out there. The nearly 100,000 virtual players have had a very tactical move to execute with the Azos high pressure system. Negotiating a high is quite complex because it is very fickle and can move randomly. Try to the west side and you might end up spending a long time sending upwind against the wind. Go through the east side and you will enjoy fast and furious speed towards the south. But then there is a trap. As we can see in these images, the wind turns clockwise around the high. The goal is to get as close as possible to the center of the high to have a better angle afterwards without falling into the very light breezes. Negotiating the other's high is one of the major difficulty going south. Stay tuned all the way to Brazil in the upcoming editions of NC Sports. This is no drill. Welcome to the secret underground submarine base GT825 and one of the toughest triathlon races in the world. 29 athletes, including five women from throughout the Ukraine and Russia, took part in this grueling challenge on the Crimean sea town of Balaklava, mixing kayaking, swimming, and mountain running. It's the Red Bull Mission 825 Ukraine. Athletes first navigated a narrow 600-meter channel inside the tunnel. After this evocative Cold War crossing, they left their kayaks and continued to run along the inner corridors of the Soviet-era base for the next test, a half a kilometer swim across the cold Black Sea waters of the historic Balaklava Bay. If that wasn't enough to discourage the weakest, the pack then set its sight on the final stretch and the winding uphill run towards the tower of the legendary Semelo Fortress, the choke point of some 500 years of European battles and invasions. 36-year-old Anatoly Nesterov, the current quadrathlon world champion, was soon the king of the hill and covered the distance in just 22 minutes. While among the women challengers, Elena Yankovskaya led the pack all the way up to the finish. The Spanish Armada was once again on top form for the final day of the PKRA International Kite Surf Festival in Hainan. With 15 to 20 knot onshore winds and perfect wave conditions, Isela Pulido and Alex Pastor reconfirmed the Who's Boss, having this China event and their respective 2013 freestyle world titles.
It was a tough comeback win for Pastor as Christoph Tack, Mark Jacobs, and another young and rising Spanish superstar, Liam Whaley, played the early lead. Pushed back in the singles, Alex leaped back from third to first place thanks to the double eliminations as very tight heats would follow. 17-year-old Liam scored high in the finals with a BJ5 and a double Hinterberger Moog. It wasn't enough against Jacob Zan Pastor, and it came down to just a 0.19 margin to take home the cup in Hainan. Yeah. <laughs> so stoked, yeah. That's what I needed to go home happy after I won the title. Yeah, I really wanted to win this event just to make sure um, I still got it, you know. <laughs> All right, then. But yeah, feels really great after coming back from third place also. I've never won after being third, only being second, but yeah, feels so great. Drinks tonight. <laughs> In women's freestyle, 19-year-old Gisela Pulido pulled off a 313, a blind judge, a black mob, s mob, and a 315 to dominate the final against Poland's Karolina Winkowska. This is Pulido's ninth world title, reconfirming once again her huge talent and her astonishing career as a professional athlete that began even before her teens. She did, don't believe it, it's insane. I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I, I, I'm really hard to describe how I'm feeling right now, really, really happy. I'm too celebrating with my friends at home and, and yeah, just to relax now. Like all the pressure goes and uh, now we feel way more relaxed, so yeah, pretty stoked. With the Ping Tang and Hainan events on the books and after three spectacular weeks of PKR action in China, top class kiters will now move on to the World Cup event in Mendoza, Argentina, scheduled for early December. It's the final stop of the year for the freestyle and slalom, and all eyes will be on American Brian Lake, now poised to win the PKRA men's slalom world title. All boating fans, the Nautical Channel will be on site at the upcoming Nautica 2013, bringing you special and extensive coverage of the prestigious Paris Boat Show from December 7th to the 15th. The trends and the novelties presented by the industry, the celebrities and the key players, it's all right here, only on Nautical Channel. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.